Please stand for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Tonight's invocation is being offered by Council Member Devette Blaylock. And tonight we have Troop 94. We have Chloe, Genesis, Tori, and Mina. Let us give thanks and pray. Thank you on behalf of all who are gathered here today. Thank you for our many abundant blessings. Thank you for life itself, for the measure of health we need to fulfill our callings, and for friendship. Thank you for the ability to be involved in useful work and, the, and for the honor of bearing appropriate responsibilities. In the scriptures, you have said that citizens ought to obey the governing authorities. Since you have established those very authorities to promote peace, order, and justice. Therefore, I pray for our mayor for the various levels of city officials and in particular for this assembled council. I am asking that you would graciously grant them wisdom to govern amid the conflicting interests and issues issues of our time, a sense of the welfare and true needs of our people, a keen thirst for justice and rightness, confidence in what is good and fitting, the ability to work together in harmony even when there is honest disagreement, and personal peace in their lives and joy in their task. I pray for the agenda set before them today. Please give an assurance of what would please you and what would benefit those who live and work around our beloved city. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Without objection, we'll suspend the calling of the roll and ask the clerk to record the names of the members present throughout the meeting. Is there a motion to adopt the minutes of our September 16th meeting? We have a motion and a second. Without objection, the minutes will stand approved as written. Madam Clerk, are there any messages from the mayor? There are no messages from the mayor. Thank you. Uh, before we proceed, I would like for us to have just one moment of silence for former council member J.B. Loring, who we lost this past week. Uh, just a moment of silence, please. Thank you. I would also, uh, is Roseanne in the room? I'd also like to recognize Roseanne Hayes, who recently was honored for her 40 years of service to Metro government. And 35 of those 40 years have been with the Metro Council, so congratulations. <laughs> uh, Council Member Barry, you have a presentation. Marlene, don't forget that block. Don't want to be by myself. Come on back. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I, I appreciate it. We are here tonight in recognition of resolution number RS 2014-1214. This is a, resol a resolution that recognizes the Star Spangled Banner on its 200th anniversary. Whereas the Star Spangled Banner is the national anthem of the United States, and the ly lyrics were written on September 14, 1814, by poet Francis Scott Key as he witnessed the British naval attack on Fort McHenry and, and Baltimore Harbor during the War of 1812. And whereas Mr. Steve Smart and Mr. Robert Early 
are roaming around randomly, actually not, um, uh, acknowledging the bicentennial of the Star Spangled Banner by playing a hundred or more times in 2014 the Star Spangled Banner. So it is fitting and proper tonight that we get to hear from them and we recognize this historical anniversary by having them perform the Star Spangled Banner as part of the opening part of Metro Council. Uh, oh, they're actually going to do it without a mic. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And we will present these two resolutions to you to commemorate this. I was also told as I was walking up here that Steve, that you were actually at the at uh, DuPont High School with uh, Councilman Phil Claiborne, although not as, not as a student. You were the you were the teacher. <laughs> Thank you. Councilmember Langster and Councilmember Allen, do you have a presentation? Let's see, Coach. Come on up, guys. In the middle. Can we get in the middle? Dr. Williams. Dr. Williams. <laughs> Make you stand and work for it. Thank you. I would like to read a re resolution recognizing and congratulating the Vanderbilt University Commodores baseball team and Coach Tim Corbin on winning the 2014 NCAA Division I National Championship. Whereas the Vanderbilt Commodores baseball team under the leadership of Coach Tim Corbin won the 2014 National Collegiate Athletics Association in National Division I championship and the university's first men's national championship in any sport. And whereas the Commodores victory on June 25, 2014 at the World Series in Omaha, Nebraska culminated a season of extraordinary accomplishment. And whereas the Commodores achieved an overall season record of 51 to 16, reached the NCAA tournament for the seventh time, hosted an NCAA regional at Hawkins Field, defeating a field composed of Xavier, Clemson, and Oregon, and advanced to host and defeat Stanford in a super regional, and advanced to the second college World Series in school history. And whereas during their Omaha World Series experience, the team defeated Louisville, California, Irvine, and with late inning heroics, Texas, to advance to the champion series for the first time in Vanderbilt history. And whereas in the championship series, the Commodores faced the University of Virginia Cavaliers and captured the Division I national title in dramatic fashion, three to two, in the third and deciding game. And whereas the national championship is the result of the leadership of coach Tim Corbin and the groundwork he has laid over his 12 years at Vanderbilt, during which he has imparted his knowledge, passion, and compassion to his student athletes, and is acknowledged by the College Collegiate Base Baseball as the 2014 National Coach of the Year. And we also acknowledge his assistant coaches and the rest of his staff, and the members of the team. And whereas the baseball players at Vanderbilt University epitomize all that is good in today's student athlete as they have achieved a premier level of success in competition and academics, their perseverance, determination, work ethic, and talent have made not only a championship baseball season, but bodes well for their success in the future. 
and is indeed appropriate to honor the Vanderbilt baseball Commodore bas baseball team and coaches at this time. Whereas it is fitting and proper that the Metro Council recognize and applaud the Vanderbilt baseball team for their extraordinary achievements both on and off the baseball field while setting an example for the youth of our community. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the Metro Government of Nashville and Davidson County that the Metro Council hereby goes on record as recognizing the Vanderbilt University Commodores baseball team, staff, and head coach Tim Corbin for winning the 2014 NCAA Division I National Championship. And with that, I would like to introduce the Vice Chancellor for University Affairs and Athletics, Mr. David Williams, to receive the resolution. Thank you. On behalf of Vanderbilt Athletics, thank you. But first, let me thank you guys for all of the hard work you do on behalf of our community and for taking time out of your busy and hard work to recognize our national championship baseball team. I would say this real briefly. Many people think of a championship as winning that last game. But if you know these young men and if you know our coach, you know that they started this journey sometime about this time last year. And uh, what you have to think about is if you think of them only as a champion for winning a the game, then you don't give them credit for who they really are. If you think of our coach as only a coach of baseball, then you really don't know him. He's a teacher of men. He's a developer of young men. And what he really cares about is the development of these kids. And by the, the path that he set and the program that he sets, these young men not only grow up to be great men, but they also win baseball games and they happen to win the championship. The hardest NCAA championship to win, I'll give you a short story, and then I'll let Tim tell you how he did it. When they got ready to leave, my office has to prepare a budget. Unlike football, the NCAA doesn't give you millions of dollars to go to the World Series. And they give me two budgets, worst case, best case scenario. And it's based on days gone. One scenario, they'll lose a game and they'll come home. Another scenario, they'll be there 15 days. Our baseball team left with the plan to be there 16 days. And I told my staff, only give me one, the one with the 15 days. Right. With that, I'm proud to produce and introduce our coach, Tim Corbin. Thank you very much, David. Vice Mayor, thank you. Um, Edith and Berkeley for this this opportunity all council mem members here uh, I was told when we were inside that uh, it was a big deal when Ronnie Stein would wear a baseball cap to a council meeting and uh, it is especially when it says national champions on the front of it Ronnie was kind enough to meet us back day after we won the national championship in Omaha for the celebration and he represented Mayor Dean but uh, we, we certainly thank him for that I think first and foremost, uh, as I told you out front, we were certainly happy, very happy and very proud to be an extension of a tremendous university. And, and that goes without saying. The accomplishments that the boys and the staff have made over the, the course of the year are great in a lot of different ways, but they just add to the culture of what all, already is a, a very fine private institution. But extending that, it also adds to the community and the community of Nashville, which we're so grateful for living in. The outpouring of affection for our baseball program is, uh, might be a little bit understood by our kids, but, but certainly not completely taken in. We didn't know what existed back here when we were playing. We only heard of, of certain things. But the, the fact that uh, the TV, the print media, you people staying up late, the people who spent money to come out and watch us play, and then when we get back here, the letters and the words and the emails and the text, it goes without saying. It, it's an incredible opportunity, and, and certainly we're, we're thankful for that. Getting to a national championship experience is unbelievable. To be in the face of it, of the storm, in the eye of the storm amongst you and another team, and to actually play the very last game of the season and finish what you started is uh, another story. And, and these kids did that. But I get the question a lot, Coach, was, was that your best team? Tell me, was that the best Vanderbilt team? Well, I will tell you this. Vanderbilt has been 
participating in intercollegiate athletics since the late 1890s. And there hasn't been a Vanderbilt men's team that has won a national championship until these boys did this past year, 2014. So I'll leave the definition of best to you, but in my opinion, they're the best. They're the best. The last thing, and I'll leave you with this, when we got back uh, after we had won, we had a meeting uh, two days later, and I told them simply this, that winning a national championship is very, very difficult to do. But all winning a national championship should do for us is just make you more humble and understand there could have been a lot of people in our shoes, but we achieved, we invested, and we were able to survive a very difficult tournament and finish at the end and celebrate it with many folks within, but many folks without like you. So with that, it's a tremendous honor to come back here and have your city um, honor our, our people here and our, our team and our kids. It, it means a great deal. We've done a lot of nice things, but this right here is very, very special and you have to know we're very thankful for it. Thanks for having us, folks. We really appreciate it. <clears throat> Are you giving the report? Are you giving the report? Okay. Okay, now we're at the point of elections and confirmations. Council Member Harmon. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. The Rules, Confirmations, and Public Elections Committee met this evening and considered considered the reappointments of Ms. Eileen Behan and Mr. Dewey Brandstetter and uh, voted in, in favor of their confirmation, seven in favor, zero opposed, and I would move their approval. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Thank you, Vice Mayor. We also met uh, to consider the reappointment of Ms. Betty Nixon to the Metropolitan Housing Trust Fund Commission. Um, her appointment was recommended for approval, seven in favor, zero opposed, and I would move approval. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Does that conclude your report? That concludes my report. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Oh. Uh, I need to announce that Mr. Rick Prince was withdrawn uh, from his nomination. And now I would like to ask um, Eileen Behan to stand, please. There she is. And Dewey Brandstetter. Thank you. And I know Betty Nixon had to slip out, but Eileen and Dewey, on behalf of the entire Metropolitan Council, thank you for your willingness to serve. Thank you. Um, also, council members, on your desk you'll find the announcement about the Health and Educational Facility Board vacancy. It gives you the deadlines for nominations and when that um, election will take place. We need to take RS 2014-1235 and 1214-1236 out of order if there is no objection. Um, 1235 amends the Metro government pay plan to include the veteran services officer position. 1236 approves the appointment of Lisa Kiss as the veteran service officer for Metropolitan Government. Council Member Pridemore. Uh, committee reports. Council Member Weiner. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Personnel. On RS 2014, 1235, and 1236, voted 740 against. Thank you. Budget and finance. Budget and finance, vote 1235 and 1236, 1240 against. I move for approval. Uh, Council Member Harmon. Thank you, Vice Mayor. The Rules, Confirmations, and Elections Committee recommended approval of 1236, seven in favor, zero opposed. Thank you, Council Member Pridemore. I now move for approval. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Um, 
I would like for uh, Miss Kiss to stand so we can recognize her, uh, Wendell Cheek, and Colonel Don Deering, all of the VA. Thank you for being with us tonight. Uh, if you are in the chamber, you need to find a seat. Otherwise, you'll need to go out onto the mezzanine. We're now at Bill's uh, a resolution on public hearing. It is RS 2014-1231, exempts Texas Day Brazil, located at 210 25th Avenue North from the minimum distance requirements for obtaining a beer permit. Councilmember Langster. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. I move to open the public hearing, please. Please raise your hand in, if you're in support. Please raise your hand if you're in opposition. Seeing no one in opposition, does anyone in support wish to speak? Seeing none, the public hearing is closed. Council Member Langster. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. Could I have committee reports, please? Um, Council Member Baker. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Public and safety approved three, four, zero against. Thank you. Move for approval. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. We're now at other bills on public hearing. The first one is BL 2014-878, amends Metro Zoning Code pertaining to community education sightings. Councilmember Hunt. Thank you, Vice Mayor. This ordinance, ordinance has been deferred indefinitely by the by the sponsor, which means the bill needs to be deferred prior to holding the council public hearing. You're making a motion to defer? I am making a motion to. We have a motion and a second to defer indefinitely. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Next is BL 2014-879, changes 0.88 acres from CS to RM20A zoning for property located at Chester Avenue, unnumbered, 350 feet east of Gallatin Avenue. Council Member Anthony Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Please raise your hand if you're in support. Thank you. Please raise your hand if you're in opposition. Seeing no one in opposition, does anyone in support wish to speak? Please state your name and address. My name is Andrew Beard. Uh, I'm the applicant representing Core Development and Woodland Street Partners. The address is 1498 Claremont Place. I uh, just want to thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, also, I want to take the chance to uh, thank Councilman Davis, is all, also um, Lauren Cardwell, um, we have had two community meetings over the course of the last six weeks and have really been engaged in the collaborative process uh, between all the different stakeholders uh, on a piece of parcel that's somewhat strategic for this particular neighborhood. Um, we were excited about the ability to come away with having met uh, by and large, most of the interests and concerns of the neighbors. We're looking at a 17-unit townhome development that will be transitioning from a historic single-family neighborhood uh, to commercial um, zoning along uh, Gallatin Road. Um, we went through Planning Commission with no opposition. Again, two community meetings, uh, and we appreciate the chance to work with this neighborhood and with, with Anthony again and uh, look forward to moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Public hearing is closed. Council Member Davis. Thank you. I'd like to move approval, please. We have a motion second. and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014-880 changes 39 acres from R10 to RS15 zoning for various properties located along Auburn Lane, Dartmouth Avenue to Lane Court and Woodmont Lane. Councilmember McGuire. 
Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would actually move to withdraw this bill, please. We have a motion. Is there a second? We have a motion and a second. All in favor of withdrawal, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014 881 changes 0 0.20 acres from RS5 to RM20A zoning for property located at 1223 North 6th Street. Uh, Councilmember Scott Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing. Please raise your hand if you're in support. Thank you. Please raise your hand if you're in opposition. Anyone in support wishing to speak, please line up at the lectern. State your name and address, please. Thank you, Madam Chairman and members of the council. I'm Roy Dale. I reside at 1657 Stokely Lane, and I'm representing the applicant on this uh, proposal. Um, this is a zone change request um, in Councilman Scott Davis's district. Uh, it's been recommended approval by the Planning Commission. We've uh, had a couple of community meetings. We know there's an adjacent neighbor that has some concerns, and Councilman Davis uh, is working with her to uh, address her concerns. I just want to point out again that this is an approved plan. It meets the land use policy. It was recommended by the Planning Commission unanimously, and we would hope that you would support the Commission's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Those in opposition wishing to speak, please line up at the lectern. Those in the chamber need to find a place to sit, please. <clears throat> May I speak? State your name and address. My name. Excuse me. My name is Mary Gamble. I live at 1219 North 6th Street. I live next door to the said property. I've spoken with my neighbors and I'm speaking on behalf of them. This proposal was presented to only a small group of community members, so very little community input has been provided to the applicant. This proposal will put three large homes on property that is currently zoned for a one home, one single family home. Leaving us, I'm sorry, this would also change the outlook of our neighborhood, leaving us with whatever they decide to build there. These units, <coughs> excuse me, these units will be overlooking my backyard. The setback of the home proposed to be adjacent to my house is about half or less of the setback of my home. In other words, from my front porch, I will be looking at my new neighbor's house. This is disruptive to the rhythm of the street. Finally, you are voting on a recommendation from the Planning Commission for a zoning change from, from RS5 to RM20A. However, Councilman Davis told the neighborhood leadership team that he planned to amend this bill on the third reading to change the zoning request from RM20A to SP. Please defer this, plea, this bill and send it back to planning for input on the amendments so that the community can have a public hearing on the final bill. Please consider this request. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, ma'am. My name is uh, Anthony Love. I live at 506 Douglas Avenue. That's the property across the street on the north sixth side of this property this we're talking about um, I've lived there for like 30 plus years and over the time parking has always been a problem on north six because a lot of the houses don't have driveways on north six side so they have to park on the north six side um, my problem is that with these extra units it's going to make extra parking is not going to be available. So, um, um, I also like to uh, add that the um, that they um, well, I also like to add that there's a fire hydrant in front of the 1223 North Six side, and they're not going to be a park in front of their house at all. So. All the, all the parking is going to be in front of my house and 
Ms. Gamble's house. And I think that uh, if they didn't if they didn't build so many units, then we would have the problem with the parking as we do as we will. Thank you. Thank you. Public hearing is closed. Council Member Scott Davis. Yes, Madam Vice Mayor, I'd like to close the public hearing with a brief explanation. Public hearing's closed. I'd like to make a motion for approval with a brief explanation. Have a motion and a second. Councilman. Once again, um, this project has been in front of our Cleveland Park Steering Committee. It's been in front of the general body once, and it'll probably talk again, talk about again this Thursday night. I am requesting that that this bill now, that second reading is coming to a close, it can be re-referred and be changed on third reading to an SP, which I've talked to the developer about, in order to make the changes and to make sure that the parking is not on the street in front of my good neighbor's homes. Also, we're doing the SP because we're getting rid of one of the units that were asked for, and I, w I will be re referring this bill back to the Planning Commission in order to do an SP, and I'd like to move for approval. Um, um, for, the, for the motion so I could resend it back to planning and make the changes for third and switch it to SP. So your motion is to approve and re-refer? Just to approve. Just to approve. Just to approve. Okay. We have a motion and a second to approve. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014 882 changes 1.2 acres from R6 to SP zoning for properties located at 1121 and 1125 Chester Avenue to permit up to 16 detached residential dwelling units and a common house. Council Member Anthony Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would move to open the public hearing. Uh, please raise your hand if you're in support. Please raise your hand if you're in opposition. Seeing no one in opposition, does anyone in support wish to speak? Please line up at the lectern. Lauren Cardwell, 1108 Chester Avenue. My husband, a native Nashvilleian, and I moved from New York to East Nashville in 2005. Like many folks, we were attracted to East Nashville because of its walkability, its proximity to downtown, and its historic homes. However, the two most significant factors in our decision to move to and eventually buy a home in East Nashville were its affordability and the diverse, creative community it offers. Only in East Nashville could we buy a home set between a retired African-American Air Force officer who was born in the home where he he still lives, and a Caucasian lesbian couple transplanted from Texas and New York. Our East Nashville community of friends and neighbors includes people of a variety of colors, sexual orientations, and family makeups, and from a variety of nations. We count among our East Nashville friends artists, public servants, musicians, accountants, retirees living on fixed incomes, single and stay-at-home parents, lawyers, veterans, doctors, goodwill employees, farmers, and entrepreneurs. East Nashville is a unique gem in the city's crown. A gem that has landed our city on the pages of the New York Times and Southern Living again and again. A gem that has attracted tourists to our city, helped revitalize our urban core, and enabled transplants from all over the world to find a home here. Let us not be mistaken on why that is. It is a neighborhood's residents and the community they create together that determine the life and culture of a neighborhood. The historic affordability of East Nashville, both for renters and buyers, has been key in fostering and maintaining the diverse, creative collection of folks who call East Nashville home and who have made it the desirable neighborhood it is today. Recently, our little stretch of Chester and Chapel has lost several longtime neighbors due to gentrification, including an older woman who's an in-home health care worker, a single mother and her children, a multi-generational family, three retired folks who had called Chester home for most of their adult lives, and a paraplegic bachelor who works at Goodwill. They have moved to more affordable housing farther away from the urban core, farther away from their employment, their health care, and their transportation options. 
These are the people of East Nashville. These are the people who are already our neighbors. These are some of the folks who made East Nashville what it is today. If we as a city move forward on developments that, prov that promote gentrification, like this good plan these gentlemen have come up with, and do not take care to intermix them with affordable housing options, and to safeguard existing affordable housing options, East Nashville will lose our artists, our single and stay-at-home parents, our public servants, our musicians, our retired citizens living on fixed incomes. We will lose the people who have made it what it is today. We as a city will have failed to care for all of our neighbors, and our great city will lose this truly unique, irreplaceable gem in its crown. Thank you. Anyone in opposition wishing to speak? Anyone in opposition wishing to speak, please line up at the lectern. Seeing none, Council Member Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I just want to move approval with a very brief comment. Have a motion and a second, Councilman. Um, thank you so much to Lauren for, for speaking and making that point. Um, she's absolutely right. We do have an affordable housing issue. Um, and I think a lot of the council members know that. We've had our um, meeting or summit recently that we had on that. We have a lot of work to do, and I hope that uh, some of these um, redevelopments we're doing makes us think about that, makes us look at these uh, possibilities for affordable housing. So thank you again, Lauren, and I appreciate you bringing that up. Second, I did want to speak to the development just a little bit. Um, one cool thing about this I'm very excited about, it's an actual true pocket neighborhood. Um, there's a website, pocketneighborhoods.org, you can check out. But um, it's it's a very neat development with the common house, as is mentioned in the planning uh, read-up. And one cool thing they're doing, for the first time in East Nashville, several of the units are 900 square feet. So they're building smaller than most of these developments. Um, so that will, even though it's not as affordable as we may want, they are providing some affordable stock too. Um, so again, I appreciate the larger conversation and we need to continue this. And uh, with that, I move approval. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. If you are in the chamber, you need to find a place to sit, please. DL 2014 883 changes 0.74 acres from RM20 to SP zoning for properties located at 1904, 1906, 1908B, and 1910 Hermosa Street to permit an automobile parking lot. Councilmember Langster. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move to open the public hearing. Please raise your hand if you're in support. Thank you. Please raise your hand if you're in opposition. Seeing no one in opposition, does anyone in support wish to speak? Seeing none, the public hearing is closed. Council Member Langster. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, move, move for approval, please. We have a motion second. and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014 884 changes 0.68 acres from CL to CS zoning for property located at 1001 Hickory Hill Lane. Council Member Stanley. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, open the public hearing, please. Um, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. Anyone in opposition, please raise your hand. Seeing no one in opposition, would anyone in support wish to speak? Please come line up at the lectern and state your name and address, please. Good evening, I'm Walter Teak. At one, I'm the representative of uh, Manuel Lutheran Church, the property owner of this particular piece of uh, property at 1003 Hickory Hill Lane. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for this time. Um, it, we have been the owner of this property since the late 1990s, and when we purchased it, it was and has been since the late, uh, since the mid 1960s, an auto repair facility. And as an addition, we purchased it as a part of a, and a uh, growth uh, plan for our church. We presently rent it as a tire uh, and automo automobile repair uh, facility, um, and it has been, to our knowledge, uh, until very, very recently, com uh, zoned as commercial services, which does include commercial uh, automobile sales, repairs, and uh, we purchased it because 
will always need to have our cars repaired and, re and uh, maintained. So this building was specifically built at that time for the uh, purpose and really not uh, conducive to any type of uh, business, uh, any type of other business. And today we deal with the situation that occurred in the late 1990s where, when for some reason the zoning was changed and we had no voice were in that action at that particular time. And so tonight I come and explain that only our intent in this re rezoning request is simply to change it back to what it previously was so that the business that's been operating there since early 2000 can continue to operate and continue to support the community. The community had a meeting last week and they are in support of this as well. And we have no plans at this time to change, modify, or alter the building or the property uh, in it from its current state. And uh, again, we thank my uh, Councilman Stanley for helping us uh, with this whole thing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Public hearing is closed. Council Member Stanley. Um, I move uh, approval with a brief uh, comment. We have a motion and a second. Councilman Stanley. I will let uh, everyone know that uh, this property, along with all the other Lebanon Pike uh, properties uh, on uh, the north side of Lebanon Pike, was uh, rezoned by me and the Planning Commission in cooperation with the Planning Commission to CL, Commercial Limited, from CS, Commercial Services. And that would allow for any, uh, for it would not allow for any more dense development along Lebanon Pike, which was operating over capacity at that time and had been operating over capacity it's still operating over capacity since 1985. It's a state thoroughfare, so I think it's our responsibility to make sure that any new development is going to be meet what guidelines are put forward by the infrastructure. Um, I think it's important, too, that the residents of Hermitage Hills and so Stones River Estates, they are very supportive of this of this rezoning back to commercial services because the church, Emmanuel Lutheran, has been there for years. They are a member of this community and they are supportive of the vast residential district back behind them. Hermitage Hills and Stones River Estates residential districts include three apartment complexes and 1,375 homes on 426 acres. I think it's important that we not allow any type of development that's going to uh, have an adverse impact on the value of the residential property in and around this area. But I also think it's important that we allow these uh, properties that are near Lebanon Pike, like Emmanuel Lutheran Church, to proceed with their um, uh, proposal that will generate revenue for the church. I am supportive of Emmanuel Lutheran. I'm supportive of the residents. I'm supportive of our policies. And I would ask once again that this council vote in favor of this rezoning back to CS for this one particular piece of property. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014-885 changes 0.8 acres from OR20 to SP zoning for property located at 1035 West Eastland Avenue to permit up to 65 units and 8,000 square feet of commercial space. Council Member Scott Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing. Please raise your hand if you're in support. Thank you. Please raise your hand if you're in opposition. Seeing no one in opposition, would anyone in support wish to speak? Seeing none, the public hearing is closed. Council Member Scott Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to uh, move for approval with a brief explanation. We have a motion and a second, Councilman. I'd like to thank the Planning Department and the um, Public Works Department for the help with this project and helping with infrastructure and improvement issues along the Gallatin Road corridor and the West Eastland Eastland corridor. I'd like to thank uh, my good friend Peter Westerholm for his help in this process too. And I'd like to thank the Eastwood neighbors and 
um, Rediscovery, East Nashville, and all those folks for their assistance. Thank you. Move for approval. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014886 applies a neighborhood landmark overlay district to 1.53 acres of property located at 3405 Belmont Boulevard. Councilmember McGuire. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I move to open the public hearing. Please raise your hand if you're in support. Thank you. Please raise your hand if you're in opposition. Seeing no one in opposition, does anyone in support wish to speak? Please line up at the lectern and state your name and address, please. Good afternoon. My name is Daniel Woods with the Addison Group, representing the applicant. We just wanted to take two seconds and say thank you very much for uh, everything with staff and everyone that's helped us through this process. This is an iconic piece of property, so having an opportunity to rezone the, the home and studio for the legendary Jack Clement, uh, also known as Cowboy Jack Clement, um, to a neighborhood landmark is a, is a huge thing for, for Nashville and for, and for the community. So uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you. Public hearing is closed. Council Member McGuire. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'll just move approval with a brief explanation. We have a motion and a second. Councilman. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I uh, just wanted to um, uh, publicly assure uh, I've been talking with Council Lady Allen, and I know that due to her district being in such close proximity that I um, want to make sure that her concerns are met, so I intend to talk to the applicant and, and make sure that uh, we get Council Lady Allen and her constituents comfortable before we move forward as well. So thank you, Vice Mayor, and move approval. We have a motion and a second. I'll in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014-887 amends 19.09 acres of the One City Specific Plan District for properties located at One City Avenue, Five City Boulevard, Six City Boulevard, 28th Avenue unnumbered, and Charlotte Avenue unnumbered to increase the maximum number of residential units allowed within the SP. Councilmember Langster. Thank you, Madam Vice, uh, Madam Vice Mayor. Would you open the public hearing, please? Please raise your hand if you're in support. Thank you. Please raise your hand if you're in opposition. Seeing no one in opposition, does anyone in support wish to speak? Seeing none, the public hearing is closed. Councilmember Langster. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move for approval, please. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014-888 changes 7.32 acres from R6 to SP zoning for properties located at 1106, 1110, 1114, 1200, 1202, and 1204 Lytton Avenue and a portion of property located at 1120 Lytton Avenue to permit up to 130 residential units. Council Member Anthony Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Open the public hearing, please. Please raise your hand if you're in support. Thank you. Please raise your hand if you're in opposition. Seeing no one in opposition, does anyone in support wish to speak? If so, please line up at the lectern and state your name and address. Good evening, my name is Bruce McNeilage, 1120 Lytton Avenue. Uh, along with my partners, Stephen and Rachel Franks, we're the developers and the applicant on this project. This is a 130 unit uh, condominium uh, complex that'll be priced between $130,000 and $170,000. Uh, I want to thank uh, Councilman Anthony Davis, but also our neighbor, Councilman Scott Davis, for attending uh, the meetings uh, with the homeowners associations and being so supportive. Supportive. I want to uh, also thank about 10 council people that have reached out to me in the last few weeks. I don't want to name you because I'll forget you and I don't want to offend anyone. Um, you know, we read so many things about what's going on in the Gulch and, and Sobro and, and, and by Music Row of these $400,000 to $700,000 condos, but that doesn't really meet the need of, of the working class people and, and the middle class people, our first responders, our single mothers, our nurses, and, and, and teachers that we're trying to recruit to Nashville, to this wonderful town. And when we can deliver uh, a, a lovely building uh, with granite countertops and some very 
nice features for 130,000 to 170,000. Uh, I get real excited about that, and I hope this is the first of a number of these projects uh, in the community. We aren't looking for TIF money. We're not looking for a handout. It's a 16 million dollar project. We're building this and developing this out of our own pockets uh, and some bank financing, and I'm very proud to say that. Uh, also, we have partnered with the housing fund. The housing fund really likes this program. They want to make uh, money available to people that qualify for it that will realize the dream of home ownership by, by buying these units. And the home ownership, I think, is a big deal. There'll be 130 new people in East Nashville that will have roots in the community, that will be engaged in the community, that will own uh, a part of the American dream. And, and that percentage is, is going down each year. Less people own houses now than a generation. Uh, we are, have become a generation of renters. And I want to deliver, along with my partners, uh, a project that makes uh, this neighborhood uh, a neighborhood of owners. And we feel very good about that. Again, I'd like to thank everybody uh, for supporting it and thank uh, Anthony Davis and Scott Davis for attending the meetings and being so supportive. Thank you. Public hearing is closed. Council Member Anthony Davis. Move approval of the brief comment, please. We have a motion and a second. Councilman? I just wanted to bring that affordable housing uh, conversation back full circle a little bit there. This is a great project. Thank you to Bruce for doing something that is actually affordable that a teacher, a young teacher, could move into one of these condos, uh, working professionals. And uh, it's, it's a lot of units, and uh, we're adding some good density to South Inglewood. And I'm just very excited about the project. Thank you. Move approval. Uh, thank you. We have a motion and a second. Councilman Scott Davis. I just want to thank my colleague and also the developer for their commitment to affordable housing. And it's a great day when I see everybody on the same page. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Next is BL 2014-889, changes 0.48 acres from OL to SP zoning for property located at 1032 Maynard Avenue to permit up to six residential dwelling units. Council Member Scott Davis. Councilman Bedney. Yeah, I wanted to be recorded as I'm standing on the last boat. I'm sorry, yeah, I didn't see your light. I apologize. No problem. Um, so noted. Councilman Scott Davis. Uh, yes, thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open a public hearing. Please raise your hand if you're in support. Please raise your hand if you're in opposition. Seeing no one in opposition, anyone in support wishing to speak? Seeing none, the public hearing is closed. Council Member Scott Davis. Now, my, this time, I'm sorry. I'd like to move for approval with a brief explanation. We have a motion and a second. Councilman? Even though the project is not the size of my, my brother Anthony Davis's, this is another more affordable project opening in my district. Um, I just want to thank the Planning Commission and my Maynard Avenue neighbors and also um, just encouraging this more, you know, affordable homes, you know, in our East Nashville community because we want our school teachers and our Metro employees to be able to um, be homeowners. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014-890 amends 1.37 acres of the Glen Echo Cottages Pacific Plan District for properties located at 1625, 1701, 1705, and 1709 Glen Echo Road to add property to the boundaries of the Pacific Plan District and to permit 11 detached residential dwellings for eight were previously approved. Council Member McGuire. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd move to open the public hearing. Please raise your hand if you're in support. Thank you. Please raise your hand if you're in opposition. Seeing no one in opposition, would anyone in support wish to speak? Seeing none, the public hearing is closed. Council Member McGuire. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd move approval. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. 
BL 2014-891 amends 2.63 acres of the stadium law specific plan district for properties located at 1102 and 1138 3rd Avenue North and 1121 2nd Avenue North to allow a maximum height of 85 feet where a maximum height of 75 feet was previously approved. Council Member Gilmore. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I move to open the public hearing. Please raise your hand if you're in support. Thank you. Please raise your hand if you're in opposition. Seeing no one in opposition, does anyone in support wish to speak? Seeing none, the public hearing is closed. Council Member Gilmore. Thank you very much. I move for approval. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014 892 changes 0.17 acres from CS to MUNA zoning for property located at 503 Fifth Street. Council Member Gilmore. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I move to open the public hearing. Please raise your hand if you're in support. Thank you. Please raise your hand if you're in opposition. Seeing no one in opposition, does anyone in support wish to speak? Seeing none, the public hearing is closed. Council Member Gilmore. Thank you. I move for approval. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. We're now at um, resolutions on our consent agenda. As always, I will read the ones on consent and then you can tell me um, which ones need to be pulled. Uh, 2014, 1232 through 1234 are on the consent agenda, and 1237 through 1251 are on the consent agenda. 1232 approves a grant from the Tennessee Arts Commission to the Metro Arts Commission for an educational program based on civil rights public art. 1233 approves an annual grant from the Tennessee Arts Commission to the Metro Arts Commission for operating support. 1234 approves an amendment to contract between Metro Government and Election Systems and Software LLC for a lease of electrical poll books and software. 1237 approves a second amendment to a federal grant to the Metro Fire Department for extending the end date of a grant until December 31st, 1214. 1238 approves a state grant to the Juvenile Court for Juvenile Accountability Incentive Block Grant Services to enhance court staffing to supervise delinquent youth. 1239 approves a renewal of the intergovernmental agreement between Tennessee State University and the Metro Police Department for the use of off-duty police officers during various campus events. 1240 approves a grant from the Nashville Public Library Foundation to the Public Library for the Totally Outstanding Teen Advocates for the Library Program. 1241 approves a grant from the Nashville Public Library Foundation to the Public Library to fund a part-time position <clears throat> to initiate partnerships with local colleges and universities to recruit volunteers to use throughout the library system. 1242 approves a grant from the Nashville Public Library Foundation to the Public Library to provide staffing for a special collections division. 1243 approves a grant from the Tennessee Arts Commission to the Metro Board of Parks and Recreation to provide art lessons at six regional community centers. 1244 approves an agreement between the White House Utility District and Metro Water Services for reading and maintaining water consumption meters and for disconnecting and reconnecting water service. 1245 approves an intergovernmental agreement between the State Department of Transportation and the Department of Public Works for miscellaneous safety improvements at the Old Hickory Boulevard inter intersection with Central Pike. 1246 approves an agreement between the City of Goodlettsville and Metro Water Services for reading and maintaining water consumption meters and for disconnecting and reconnecting services. 
1247 authorizes Metro government to enter into an agreement with the Nolansville College Grove Utility District to provide water services to Lot 12 of the Burkett South Subdivision. 1248 approves an intergovernmental agreement between the State Department of Transportation and the Departments of Public Works and Water and Sewer Services for improvements to Murfreesboro Pike from Volte Boulevard to Jupiter Drive. 1249 approves a grant from Keep America Beautiful Waste Management to Metro Public Works to update the technology and recycling education room at the material processing facility. 1250 uh, authorizes Metro Department of Law to settle the lawsuit brought by David and Connie Powell against Metro government for $250,000. 1251 authorizes uh, continued parking of vehicles at former Stokes Middle School property located at 3701 Belmont Boulevard. Do any of these need to be pulled off of the consent agenda? Seeing none, I will need committee reports. Council Member Pridemore. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. RS 2014 1232 and 1233 was budget finance voted 10 4 0 against. 1234, <coughs> uh, excuse me, RS 2014 1234, budget finance 11 4 0 against. 1237 through 1250, budget finance approved 12 4 0 against. Councilmember Moore, education. Um, the uh, Education Committee approved 540 against. Councilmember Bennett. The Parks and Library Committee voted on 1240, 41, 42, and 43, 440 against. Thank you. Councilmember Baker. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Public Safety Bureau and Regulated Beverages approved. Uh, 1237, 38, and 39, 340 against, and 894, 340 against. Thank you. Anthony, Council Member Anthony Davis. Thank you. Public Works voted to approve 1244 through 1249, 34, and 0 against. Thank you. Council Member Harmon. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would move approval of the consent agenda. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. And thank you to Council Member Barry for the cup of water. Um, now we're at bills on introduction and first reading. Are there any of those that need to be pulled? He didn't. Council Member Scott Davis. Okay. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, Mr. Cooper, could you read a bill number? It's 896. Okay. Um, bill 896. Um, you just need to pull it for I separate consideration? Yes, ma'am. Okay, we'll come back to that one. Are there any others that need to be pulled from first reading for special consideration? Seeing none, is there a motion for their approval? Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. We'll go back to BL 2014-896, changes 238.26 acres from RS5 to SP zoning for various properties in District 5 to allow detached accessory dwelling units with all other standards in the RS5 district. Uh, Council Member Scott Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I need to ask for a suspension of the rules. The emergency is the um, planning department and has worked very hard and I appreciate their assistance. We're trying to have everything track. You know, it will be on the agenda for October 23rd and the plan is is to add some, is to tweak it a little bit to make some recommendations and to continue having con community meetings uh, a lot of support for the uh, detached accessory dwellings or aka mother law suites and it will just save us a little bit of money for the city just by keeping it together and i ask for a suspension of rules we have a motion and a s second uh, Mr. Cooper, would you like to explain the... 
Yes, uh, the rules require that for PUDs and SP zoning bills that the Planning Commission make a recommendation prior to them being considered on first reading by the Council. So in order for this one to um, be advertised for the November public hearing, the Council needs to, would need to suspend the rules tonight. Is there any objection? Seeing none, Council Member Scott Davis. I'd like to move for approval. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion is approved. We're now at bills on second reading. The first one is BL 2014-670, authorizes the acquisition of right-of-way permanent easements and temporary construction easements and property rights for the Gulch Pedestrian Bridge Project. Council Member Gilmore. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would like to move for approval and ask um, Mr. Rieblin if he could explain it. And also I'd like to make a brief. We uh, have a motion second. and a Please second. Comment. And what was your request to Mr. Reebling? To have him to speak to the financing of the bridge, and okay. then after that, I'd like to make brief comments. Mr. Reebling? Excuse me. Thank you, Vice Mayor, uh, members of the council. Uh, um, what what um, sponsor has asked me to do is just sort of explain sort of the difference between this bill today and kind of where it was a few months ago when it first came to the council and was deferred. Um, as you may recall, that night there was a lot of questions about um, this bridge and there was a lot of concerns about uh, this project potentially taking um, projects from other needed other needed projects in council districts. Uh, so they put, put on deferral and gave us an opportunity to do a couple things. One of which was we included, uh, we heard what the council said and put um, I think a, probably a record amount of sidewalk money in the last capital spending plan uh, and um, we continue to hear what the council says and I, I think it's safe to say that there's going to be continued emphasis on sidewalk funding in future capital plans. At least the one that this administration will offer up to the council uh, before its term is over with. Um, so uh, what we looked at here, uh, I've came up with a plan that we think is more palatable across the county uh, and one that makes more sense and frankly one which um, I wish I uh, we had come to the council with originally, but we didn't and I apologize for that. Uh, but what we're doing here is instead of having um, property being bonded and sort of funded by properties from all across the county, um, we're going to limit the, this bridge, the cost of this bridge, to be repaid by from seven properties within the Arts Redevelopment District. Uh, and so instead of the entire county paying for it, it's going to be limited to those seven properties. So as TIF loans on those properties are paid off through the MDHA process, uh, instead of returning that money to MDHA for other infrastructure projects in the Gulch, in the Arch Redevelopment District, um, we will capture the first $18 million, or, or whatever the bridge costs, up to $18 million, and essentially pay us back for that money uh, from the property taxes collected off those seven properties, uh, and not from general property taxes across the county. Um, we think it will be paid back uh, conservatively, conservatively, I can't talk today, um, within um, uh, probably a six to eight year period, uh, and depending on reappraisal uh, in 2017, uh, could actually be paid back uh, in a shorter period of time. Um, so again, I think it's fair to say uh, that property taxpayers across the county are not going to be paying for this project, but it's going to be paid from by these um, these property owners within the Arch Redevelopment District uh, and properties that will be most directly benefit from the from its its building, uh, and it's more rightfully put that they're the ones that uh, those property taxes should be used to pay for it. Um, uh, as you know, the, the 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 Gulch area has gone through a tremendous uh, growth uh, over the last decade. Uh, property tax collections in that area uh, have gone up over 300 percent um, since uh, in the last decade or longer, uh, and many more projects are uh, on the board, some under construction and some already announced, uh, including uh, at least uh, two new hotels uh, as well as other uh, residential and commercial uh, developments. 
And, and finally, um, uh, one, let me just say one other thing. Uh, I know that um, there's a lot of questions about the design of this project. When, when the council put this on, deferred, uh, deferred it indefinitely some six months ago, um, we stopped work on the project. Essentially, there's no more design work being done. Uh, and subsequent to, uh, to that, uh, one of the uh, property owners on the, uh, on the east side uh, of, of, the, uh, of, of, the, uh, of the bridge uh, has announced and, and is working forward on a development plan. Uh, and so we're going to be working with them and the other property owners in terms of the actual location of this. There's nothing set in concrete, uh, but we recognize that we want to maximize development as a result of this project. And so we will be working with all the property owners uh, in order to, uh, to maximize development and site the bridge uh, in the best and the most advantageous uh, way possible. Um, and so with that, I think uh, obviously, any other questions that I might answer, but that sort of, I think, explains, uh, in, in hopefully, uh, succinctly, uh, the change in the financing mechanism. Council Member Gilmore. Uh, thank you um, very much. I want to make brief comments. I would like to thank uh, Mayor Dean and Rich Rieblin, as along with Marty Zygas, for their strong support. Additionally, I would like to thank my council members for bringing attention to the walkability of the city of Nashville, and thank you in advance for your support tonight. The Gulch Pedestrian Bridge is a benefit to all the citizens by providing easier access between vital connections that provide an array of options for residents, businesses, and visitors. The vibrancy has been generated through the rapid increased development in the commercial and residential sector, which has produced, can I? Thank you. Which has produced accelerated growth in tax revenues and jobs for the city of Nashville. Moreover, this bridge was identified by the residents as a high priority in the Sobro Master Plan. It provides a critical link to creating a more pedestrian and bike friendly area to not only downtown but to all of Nashville. Most importantly, the financing plan will directly impact only those property owners in the Gulch. The project will not be financed through general metro government revenue, nor does it require residents or property owners to pay additional taxes. In closing, the bridge provides seamless connectivity and a continued vibrancy for the city of Nashville. Thank you so much. Council Member Matthews. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. I stand in support of this bill. Uh, I'd like to applaud the sponsor on her work on this, making sure and being patient, uh, but making sure that her constituents uh, are, are going to see something significant in the Gulch area. Um, I think we all know the importance of, of the core of the city and, and investing in the core of Nashville. And I'd like to applaud the mayor's office for their work in bringing back a, a financial plan uh, that I think we all can, 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 can support at this point. But I think it's more commendable uh, to mention that the mayor has committed to a significant sidewalk plan in this upcoming capital spending uh, budget that, that will be presented. And that is significant to all of Davidson County, not just the downtown core, but all of our neighborhoods. Uh, hopefully we'll, we'll be able to see a significant improvement in the walkability of Davidson County. And I, I want to commend the mayor's office, uh, Rich, uh, your office for all of your work on this. Thank you. Council Member Glover. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Well, I certainly appreciate the fact that uh, the growth is happening and the mayor's office has come up with a creative way for paying for this. Uh, as a councilman in a district that is watching a lot of growth move to Wilson County, uh, I've approached the area and I've approached the administration about doing very similar types of projects as I'm sure other council members have as well. Not to take away anything from the Gulch, not to take away from anything from the downtown core, but the fact of the matter is I watch business move away from Davidson County every day. And I watch people move away from Davidson County every day. And I'd be remorse if I didn't stand up and say that I feel like that we need to put the same effort and the same creativity in how we finance projects out in our own districts in order to be able to bring businesses into our district and to generate tax revenues in our districts the same way that we're putting the effort into this one. So I can't vote for this simply because I don't feel like we're getting the same opportunities in our districts that are happening downtown. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Council Member Barry. No, thank you, Vice Mayor. I actually do rise in support tonight to vote for the Gulch uh, Pedestrian Bridge. And I know that $18 million sounds like a significant investment, but I think it, we have to be very thoughtful about how we are doing um, our financing. But this is a really important project. 
Connecting Nashville for pedestrians, pedestrians isn't just a nicety, it's a necessity because it feeds into safety and economic development. And ultimately, what we do over the next few months is really going to improve our transit options and biking and walking are transit options and we absolutely need to make sure that they are key components of our transportation policy. So I vote for this, I think it's great. I agree with uh, Councilman uh, Glover that we actually need to make sure we're investing in other parts of this county as well, but this is a good project and I applaud the sponsor in the mayor's office for bringing it back to us with this financing. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. no. Motion passes. Next, we're at 1214-860, amends the Geographic Information System Street and Alley Centerline layer by renaming a portion of the 28th Avenue North and 31st Avenue North as Ed Temple Boulevard. Council Member Maynard. I thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Um, Council Member Anthony Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. The Public Works Committee voted to disapprove this six... 640 against in disapproval. Council Member Hunt. Thank you, Vice Mayor. The Planning Zone and Historic Committee voted to disapprove nine uh, against one four and one abstention. Council Member Harrison. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, traffic and Park and made no recommendation. Thank you, Council Member Maynard. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move to withdraw the bill with a brief explanation. We have a motion and a second. Councilman. Thank you, Vice Mayor. About six weeks ago, I received a call and for a meeting uh, with Tennessee State University alumni as well as persons who were uh, working for TSU or were connected with the Tennessee State University athletic team in order to honor uh, Ed Temple, Coach Ed Temple, who was the most successful, most honored uh, Olympic coach in the history of the United States who happens to live here. Uh, at that meeting, I received information I thought I knew about Ed Temple that I did not know, that he is the, that he is the best, the greatest Olympic coach in our history, uh, winning 23 medals in the Olympic Games as well as national championships. I then went and talked to the staff here about how we could do it. After talking to them, I then called the local council person for District 21. Unfortunately, we could not agree as to whether it should be filed. So therefore, uh, it was filed by myself and Councilman uh, Linnell uh, Matthews. After talking with those persons who asked us to support this and after talking to two Olympians and telling them what happened last night during our committee meetings, uh, they were uh, encouraged us to want to unify behind a project that all of us can get behind. So to the 520 people who signed the petition and support, I want to encourage them to join with me along with Bo Roberts, Howard Gentry, and the administration to support the monument that will be built if we raise the money at the Sulphur Dale. And so we want to unify between behind a project that we can all get behind, and I believe that project is the monument at the Sulphur Dale Baseball Park. So I want to thank the council for this, and I hope that the council will also get involved and use their energy and resources to make sure that this happens, that we honor Ed Temple. Thank you, Vice Mayor. All in favor of the motion to withdraw, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014-873 authorizes Metro government to enter into a participation agreement with Laurel Property LLC to provide public water service improvements. Council Member Pridemore. Committee report. Council Member Anthony Davis. Public Works voted to approve 340 against. Council Member Pridemore. Move for approval. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014-894 approves an affiliation agreement between Vanderbilt University and Metro Government to provide student clinical instruction and training with Davidson County Community Corrections. Council Member Baker. Committee report, please. Um, that would be you. Uh, public safety bill and regulated beverages approved 340 against. I'm over approval. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014 895 declares 16 parcels of Metro government owned property to be surplus and authorizes the Director of Public Property Administration to sell the property. Council Member Pridemore. Committee report, please. Council Member Hunt.
Plan and zoning approved. I mean, where are we? Huh? 895? Excuse me, Vice Mayor. <clears throat> It's not on here. I'm sorry. 895. Planning and Zoning Historic Committee voted to approve 1140 against. Thank you. Budget and Finance. Budget and Finance voted 12 for approval. 1240 against. Move for approval. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Ooh, BL 2014-835 changes 0.49 acres from R8 to SP zoning for property located at 1813 Beach Avenue to permit up to seven detached residential units. Council Member Moore. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'm going to move for a two-meeting deferral, and I do have a comment on this. We have a motion and a second. Council Member Moore. Uh, we did have a community meeting on this uh, particular uh, property at Beach Avenue and there were still some concerns so with that I'm going to have to have some more meetings about this SP uh, with that I have a two meeting def uh, move for a two meeting deferral on this particular we legislation. We have a motion and a second for the deferral all in favor please say aye, aye. opposed no motion passes BL 2014 871 adopts the property identification maps for tax assessment purposes. Councilmember Hunt. Try again. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, all the approved by the planning and zoning, I move for approval. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014 872 authorizes Metro Government to enter into an agreement with LPC contractors of Southeast Inc. to provide public water service improvements. Councilmember Langster. Councilman Pridemore is in. Okay, Councilmember Pridemore. With all, um, all departments um, approving the bill, I move for approval. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014 874 abandons an existing 10 foot public utility drainage easement for properties located at 3622, 3622B, 3624, 3630, 3630 B, and 3632 Redmond Street and at Normandy Circle. Councilmember Anthony Davis. Thank you. I'd like to move for approval, please. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014-875 abandons retained easement rights for a portion of former alley number 1999 for property located at 1001 Riverside Drive. Council Member Westerholm. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. Committee reports? All are in. All are in. With that, I would move approval. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014-876 abandons retained easement rights in a portion of the former right-of-way of Alley 63 for properties located at 700 Broadway and 126 Rosa L. Parks Boulevard. Council Member Gilmore. Thank you, Vice Mayor. With committee reports being in, I move for approval. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014-877 abandons retained easement rights for a former right-of-way of alley number 123 for properties located at 300 and 312 9th Avenue South. Council Member Gilmore. Thank you, Vice Mayor. With all committee reports in, I move for approval. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2014-893 amends the official street and alley acceptance and maintenance map by closing and abandoning the right-of-way and easements for alleys number 115 and 123 and authorizes the execution of a quick claim deed to convey all interest Metro government possesses in the right-of-way. Council Member Gilmore. Thank you, Vice Mayor. With all committee reports in, I move for approval. 
We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. Next is RS 2014-1252, request the President and the United States Congress to select public infrastructure improvements as the priority activity of the United States to upgrade the current substandard infrastructure of the nation, strengthen the national economy, and support healthy and vibrant communities in the United States. Council Member Stanley. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee report, please. Council Member Harmon. Thank you, Vice Mayor. The Rules, Confirmations, and Public Elections Committee deferred one meeting by a vote of seven to zero. Thank you. Council Member Stanley. With that, I uh, ask for a deferral for one meeting. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. All, is there a motion to adjourn? All in favor, please say aye. aye.